Hi everybody, welcome back. Today I wanted to go over a few questions that people had before I get to my painting. If you don't want to hear this part, you can fast forward to the painting, but I'm just going to quickly give a shout out to all of the teens at Youth Engaged in New York City. Um, I've been in touch with Nikki, and I do plan on sending you those supplies. There was a problem with our emails getting back and forth, and I just needed to verify a few things before sending them out. Also, I'm going to be going through some of my supplies to see if there's anything else that I can send on to you. Um, I think there's a few things. I do have some items that I haven't used in a very long time, and if you can get use out of them, then I will send them on to New York. So... Um, also, and thank you so much, all of you guys, for watching my videos and for all of you at Youth Engaged that you're watching my videos. That means a lot to me. Um, if you get a chance to comment, please comment and say hi to me. I'd love to get to know the people that I'm sending the supplies to. So, um, also, I wanted to address something else. Somebody asked me, uh, James, asked me about the Pentelic book and whether or not it is um, the same on both sides of the paper. You know how you have a front and a back to watercolor paper. Well, this paper is the same on both sides. Yes, both sides. Actually, it looks like every, every fourth or fifth page might be slightly no it's still the same it might be slightly just slightly different but not all of the pages are like that it's very interesting um it's like every fourth or fifth one i question but it is so slight that i can't even tell you for sure whether or not it is different. I think it's the same. Um, I've never noticed any difference using front and back. My paintings all look the same. So, oh, I cannot see through my glasses today. I think I got a dog kiss on my glasses. There we go. Um, also, so I wanted to tell you about that. That's something that I should have said in my review on the Pentelic versus Moleskine video. Um, also, somebody asked... Lori, Lori Hill, asked, Sharon, love your painting, would love to see it done with step-by-step -step instructions to paint along with you, hint, hint. Um, so I will do another paint along video today. Uh, I don't know if you guys would prefer I do it a little faster in a time lapse and then give it a voiceover so the video isn't so long, or if you just want me to talk you through it as I'm painting it so you can see it real time. If you could let me know that, that would really help me in future videos to know what you guys would prefer to watch. Um, and whichever I get the majority in is which way I will head most of the time, but I will do it both ways from time to time for you. Um, I think that was all I wanted to get to. Um, if you have any any um, art supplies, dry media that you're not using, or markers um, like watercolor pencils, uh, colored pencils, markers, uh, water soluble and alcohol markers, anything like that, paper that you're not using and would like to send on to Youth Engaged in New York, let me pull that address up. Okay, so the video for or video for the address for Youth Engaged is um, you want to address it to Nikki Hines, N I K K I H I N D S, Volunteer Executive Director for Youth Engaged, 650 West 42nd Street, number 324, New York, New York. <laughs> My dog's excited. 10036 and I will put that down below so that you can um, actually see it rather than hear my dog going nuts because my cleaning lady just arrived so, so another viewer by the name of Anita asked what's your opinion on decorating your room with your own paintings um, do you think it's vain or okay well, Anita, I think it's okay, but <laughs> but um, I'm not sure where you'd put your paintings if 
you weren't hanging them up somewhere. Um, and you painted them, and you might as well enjoy them. They might give you inspiration on a new painting. I have some things in my room that I painted when I first started out. Um, I see an oil pastel of an eaten apple that's stuck to my mirror. Um, I'll do a I'll do a video on a lot of the stuff that um, a lot of my paintings so that I can show you some of my work. But over here, you see all this stuff, even up here at the top of the room. Um, up there, that one was one of my first acrylic pa intuitive paintings I ever did. Um, I really enjoy intuitive painting. It's a great way when you don't have any inspiration and you don't know what to paint. You just start putting color down and playing around and things happen and before you know it you're making something and that's what that is. It's supposed to be some sort of other planetary place where birds live <laughs> or something. I don't know. That's for sale on my website. Also my poppy painting up there was one of my first oil paintings that I did. Um, that one down below it is called Adam and Eve. The blue area right there is God. That's Adam. And then down here is Eve, obviously. Um, and that one also just kind of happened. I had no plan for that. Um, and then over there, that little black and white one is from my, oh, excuse my messy desk, from one of my Sketchbox videos. And then this is an unfinished, um, pastel painting I was working on of a dog and a kitten. Um, it is unfinished. And um, of course behind it are a bunch of my commissions that I have to get framed or I mean get matted and framed and get ready for for giving them away um, or giving them to my customers. So anyway, I do think that it's okay to hang your paintings up. I don't know where else you'd put them. You just paint them and then shove them in a drawer somewhere or in a, I'd like to have one of those um, carts and I'm going to ask for it for Christmas because it can roll right under my table. My table is, I think, 26 and a half inches high and the cart goes up to 23, but it's a drying rack for paintings and it's really cool. So I'm going to hope, I'm hopeful to get that and that would be another place that I would store paintings to, at least wet ones. Um, I also have a trunk um, that's across the room there, but my room is too messy to show you right now. Um, and that trunk houses some of my paintings, like pastel paintings, which get very dusty and have to be put away a certain way so that the plastic does not move on the painting or else it continues to smear and you lose your painting. Um, but anyway, yes, so Anita, to answer your question, that was a long roundabout answer to say, yes, hang up your paintings. I don't understand why you wouldn't. It's not vain. Um, and who's going to see them? You know? Or if you're going to sell them, then you might want people to see them because they might say, oh, you paint? Wow, let me, can you paint me something or whatever? I, I can't tell you how many times people have said that to me. So. Also, I also wanted to tell you about this one right up here. The woman with the big red hair. That was a gift given to me. It's done in acrylic and it was done by a... Um, artist that is in a group that I help admin on Facebook and it's a private group um, but she has advanced so much and she does auctions and she does these beautiful acrylic paintings that are somewhat impressionistic or uh, sometimes a little bit a almost abstract but her blending techniques are beautiful. Her name is Sarah Birch, S-A-R-A, -A, and her last name is B-U-R-C-H. If you check her out on Facebook, I don't know if her um, Facebook group is Sarah Birch Art, if she even hit, or not group, page. I'm not sure. Here, let me check. Okay, I found it. Um, it is called Sarah's Art and Soul. On Facebook I don't know if you can see that or not I got all these lights that are gonna shine against everything but um, anyway it's Sarah's art and soul and um, oops I lost it I hate when that happens anyway 
Sarah's is S-A-R-A -A apostrophe S, Art and Soul. And she's got some beautiful paintings. Um, so shout out to Sarah. Um, but that's her painting. And all the rest of these are mine. The one underneath it is a watercolor that I did on canvas. I did it on video. So I, there is a YouTube video for this one. And basically I was painting on um, Golden's Cold Press Ground, which I painted onto the surface, let it dry completely overnight, and then I started painting in watercolor over it. And then I used Durlin's Wax Medium, which you can rub on with your hand afterward, and that is completely waterproof. You can wash it with a rag or whatever, and that is going nowhere. In fact, there's a little mistake on it that I made and I didn't realize it until after, oops, I think the UPS truck is here. Um, so I made a mistake and accidentally put the wax over it and there was no fixing it afterward. I tried to scrub it off and I could not get it off. But anyway, let's get on with the painting video. Okay, so here's a photo that is really interesting. I love the cloud up in the sky up here. I think that is really nice. And then there's a river over here and it looks like somebody is standing on a bridge when she shot the photo. But is this a good composition? Not necessarily. It can be changed to that. Um, see this river goes down but then it starts to wrap around to the right back here, which is good because it draws you back into the painting so that you see this this little spot over here of land. On this side though, the road leads right off the page, which will lead the eye off the page, which you never ever want to do in a painting. So the only way I could use this then would be to change this road and bring it up and around and you know it would look really cool with this hill here. It would look kind of neat if the center was like a heart, wouldn't it? That would be kind of cool. I don't know if I'd do it in watercolor though. That'd be cool in oil or acrylic. But anyway, I don't think I'm gonna use this painting, so let me keep looking. Now this one is kind of interesting. Um, there's a few things going on. First of all, the tree is centered and we don't want it centered. So I could easily move this tree over to the right about here, <coughs> which, excuse me, which I think would be really good. Then you have this line of trees way, way in the distance on either side, and then they come forward up around here. The grass is still green, but then if you look along here, this is a fence line going all the way back which also would add some interest to the painting. So I think we'll do this one today. We'll see how it comes out. This tree is beautiful. I love the branches on it too. One more thing I wanted to show you was, I've been telling you I was going to show you my other watercolor palette when I bring it out. It's kind of dirty right now. Um, I haven't used it in a while. I just wet some of the paints down, but this is it. This is the Stephen Quiller Excuse my wiggling, I gotta stand up here. This is the Stephen Quiller watercolor palette. Um, this is the porcelain one. He also makes a plastic one. Um, this doesn't have enough wells for all of my colors, which is a bummer, but that's okay. Um, I'm gonna use this up. That's why I'm letting it empty. Some of these are getting really, really low, like very low. So I'm letting it empty and then I'm going to put back my favorite, absolute favorite colors that I have to have. But this is um, my Christmas present from last year and it is about, it's probably about 20 pounds. That thing is so heavy. It's solid porcelain. But let's get on with the painting. Okay, so I'm wetting down the paper and then I'm, oh, and I'm also putting some clips down just to hold the paper still. And I am adding some ultramarine blue. I'm working in my extra large pentallic 
watercolor or aqua journal they call it today and this paper truly does dry flat afterward the only problem I ever have with this paper is that it um, curls over on the corners as you can see it doing right there at the upper edge but that's it and when it dries it's flat again so it's no big deal now I'm just using a brush here to soften out the edges but make sure you know your brushes are clean first because my brush had brown paint on it <laughs> Now here I'm just using Payne's Gray and there were shadows on the left side which I will be adding in later but I'm trying to darken the right side a little more. I add the Payne's Gray and then I go back with just a wet brush and draw the color over with the water. So I've added in some of the trees in the background and now I'm adding the grasses in. I want to keep the grass in the front a little on the warmer side because it's closer to us. And as things recede with perspective, they're going to become cooler in the background. Obviously with the trees, they um, are warm colors, but that's okay. Now I'm going to start by adding some burnt sienna in a light wash in the area of the leaves on the trees. I'm looking at the photo and trying to keep it fairly similar so that I keep the same shape of the tree, just like I did um, with Somebody the was asking me about the trees, and so now I'm, going I'm in with bringing the speed down for this sienna, portion. And what I did was basically put a light wash leaves. underneath the, um, in the shape of that area. tree that we looked at. Um, it looks really rough right now, but I'm going to slowly I'm begin to layer anyway, layer I'm up. And some, some of these branches that are going to get covered, I will put back in later, and then I will add some thinner branches. But as bit. I get out to the uh, edge of the tree, I'm just dab the leaves in here and there. working these leaves in. A lot of the branches because there's patches separate of leaves that are kind of loose so up at the top of this tree. So I'm just kind of dabbling it around. Now this is what I'm using here is a size 8 Cosmotop Spin um, oval or cat's, uh, cat's tongue or whatever. It's really an oval, um, oval uh, brush but uh, it doesn't come to a really sharp point. Cat's tongues usually come to a very sharp point. Um, sometimes they're called snake's tongues as well. But anyway, I'm just slowly adding these leaves that are coming out. There's kind of spaces in between patches and then openings. And so I'm just slowly, The better it's better even to hold your brush. I'm a lefty, sorry. Um, hold your brush at the end so that you can just slowly dab it and just let it do its own thing and that will make your leaves for you. So I'm just doing this and I'm going to be adding other colors too. I just want to get around this tree a little bit. This gets a little bit darker in here and then over here we go again. a big patch in here that I didn't get. There we go. Just rough that in and then add a little bit. Now what I'm going to do now is I'm going to add another color. Oh, I don't have my correct palette out here so I'm going to have to mix my own. Let's see, I've got crimson over there, permanent blue violet, and we'll just put those together. Oops, that was moon glow. I don't want moon glow. There's some permanent blue violet, and I don't know what this is, some sort of a red. There, make it a purple. Now I'm just going to add this. It might be a little too dark. We'll have to see. Yeah, that's a little bit strong. The 
violet and this is so strong but anyway what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to slowly add these layers onto the tree I'm not making it exact like the other one I want to keep the shape but the colors you can do whatever you want to so now I'm going to go ahead and speed this up again um, just going over the very dark areas with this color and then um, I will continue on and then I'll start putting some quinacridone sienna on also to brighten it up. gray again and I'm darkening some areas of the trunk but I still want to keep that area on the left of the main trunk lighter because the light is hitting it. I'll come back in a little while and I will add some shadows on that but in the meantime I'm just darkening the branches within the tree and then I'm adding some smaller branches. Now I'm going to go back again with the leaf colors and um, oh no I put the shadows in there prior to that I was just dabbing at the trees in the background the ones that were closest to try to give them a little bit of definition but not much now I have the shadows in the tree and I'm just finishing up with the fence and that is it adding some shadows under those distant trees and some branches on the closer trees here. Now I'm just adding some dry brushing here. This brush is virtually dry and I'm going into some semi-wet paint that's on my palette and I'm just picking up some of the green and just adding it here and there just to rough up this so it doesn't look so back and forth smooth you know what I mean I don't like to get the whoops don't like to get this brush wet though because if I do then the dry brushing doesn't work very well you can dampen it and then dry it off so that the bristles get a little damp but now watch I probably got too much water eh, maybe not grass was short anyway so I'm gonna add a little bit in between the fence posts even though in the picture I can't really see that far but I got some white hanging out here so I'm just kind of adding it in but not so that you can see a lot of plants growing up it looks like it was mowed or something so there's not a lot of height to the grass. And then there was a little couple spots that looked kind of sandy dirty. So I'm just going to take a little bit of yellow ochre right from my palette. I think this is yellow ochre. Is that yellow ochre? Yes. Check my chart. I'm just going to kind of put that in here and there so it doesn't look so perfect not going to have the same effect as dirt because there's green there already but it can look like brown grass and that'll help give it some character and I think that's about it uh, no I gotta fix this over here I don't like the way that's looking so we go ahead and fix that and then we will be finished.